These texts are always very interesting. The first topic was um, ineffability. The I don't know mind. When we get lost in our thoughts, we we abandon this trying to figure it out. So now we're we're on spaciousness, the second great summer. So it says, in awareness, a supreme evenness, free of extremes. Phenomenon, the world of appearances and possibilities, whether of samsara or nirvana, arise ceaselessly. Even as they arise, neither mind nor phenomenon can be characterized as things. They are embraced within openness, the nature of phenomenon. The seal of awakened mind beyond which no one goes, is timelessly applied through supreme and holy positive spaciousness, is embraced by the enlightened being of the Guru, protector of beings, and spiritual master, and is itself sealed as the ever-awakened state, the Vajra Heart Essence. This definitive meaning of the supreme secret is not within the reach of anyone who is not of the highest capabilities and good fortune. The theme of the Vajra Pinnacle is that there is no transition or change. Although the vast expanse of enlightened being, utterly lucid, self-knowing awareness, is within oneself, it is difficult to always realize this. It is seen through the grace of the Guru, glorious protector and spiritual master. It is termed all phenomenon embraced with an uninterrupted openness. So the reason why they, they really kind of um, emphasize that this is a lineage thing passed on by your spiritual guides is because we're dealing with something ineffable here and you can't really pass it on any other way and it's not really a passing it's more of a reminding and if you have ever noticed when you're out you can actually see something maybe it's the way somebody's dressed and you'd be like oh i like those shoes it reminds me I should get some shoes like that. Or, oh, look, that person has a haircut. I should cut my hair. Anything like that. Well, in the same way, there's an intuitive mnemonic there. If we're lucky, that when we're around in the presence of these lineage uh, practitioners, usually the teachers, then we see a part of our own nature there when they introduce that, when they share that. So they could be sharing in many ways, texts, through the empowerment, retreats, Dharma talks, explicitly pointing out. But that's what's happening. You're being reminded a part of your distraction is ceasing, part of your confusion is clearing in the face of this kind of mnemonic. Okay. <clears throat> Saraha was saying the same thing in his treasury of distracts. <laughs> well, he was saying that this, this cannot, it, it's treasury of songs, of course, uh, that you cannot pass it any other way. It has to go from the realized. If the person is, if there's no realization in the lineage, it cannot be passed. 
All right. So the decisive experience of openness is the ultimate heart essence. Outer phenomena, unborn, scope of emptiness. They are beyond characterization or expression, since they do not abide in any specific way, and neither come nor go. There is no division between inner phenomenon arising and being free. They are like the traces of a bird in the sky. No frame of reference applies. Objects in mind, just as they are, and even naturally occurring timeless awareness, are mere labels and beyond characterization or expression. Yeah, I use that word awareness a lot. I feel like it's very accessible. We've gone through this. There are many other words. We can get more technical with our lingo. We can get more accessible and simple with it. It's really going to be about the individual case. You know, the context, how we're talking about it and all this stuff. So they are free of elaboration, since as with space, there is no creator. This is the realm of emptiness involving no effort or achievement, beyond good or bad, positive or negative, and beyond causality. The ten attributes do not apply. Completely spacious openness, the expanse free of characterization or expression is timelessly empty with no question of its being a phenomenon or not. So again, empty means um, that it's mind and it can't be located in a specific place. It doesn't have a substantial standalone existence, okay? They use that word quite often and sometimes it can be out of context a little bit so let's see here it does not partake of existence in great perfection free of ordinary consciousness one comes to a decisive experience of the inconceivable and inexpressible, inexpressible nature from the precious treasury of the way of abiding this is the second topic reaching the definitive conclusion concerning the supreme and uninterrupted openness of all phenomena. All right, and I will leave it here. Looks like pure presence is going to be next. So yeah, this book, The Way of Abiding, actually just... Um, it explains how to meditate in Dzogchen, essentially. 